How can you have more energy? How can you be super energetic? How can you have the energy you wish for in your life? On today's video, I'm going to cover certain key principles that can support you to have more energy. I know these works, I've used them on myself, I've used them with my clients. These principles really, really work. First principle, physical energy. Here you want to really look into your nutrition, exercise, sleep, and time out and see if they are optimized. I'm not going to cover in depth what healthy nutrition looks like, what sort of exercise fitness routine you need, how many hours of sleep, and what does time out look, out, look like for you. All I say is keep NEST in mind as your acronym. So nutrition, exercise, sleep, time out, NEST, and check. Check every day, morning and evening, how are you doing on these four and what can you put, put in place to optimize them? And if you're getting stuck, well, there's a lot of information out there on sleep for sure. And for nutrition and exercise, you can get a fitness trainer, you can get a nutritionist. These things aren't very hard to find and there are many ways you can use to implement this. So this is just for your physical energy, but there's a lot more when it comes to energy. The second part is emotional management because guess what if you're always feeling stressed tired frustrated annoyed angry etc etc this is going to have a huge toll on how energized you are it's maybe obvious when you think about it but you could be eating super healthy and running every single day but if you're still feeling stressed or angry or annoyed, you're not going to be energetic. So you want to look at what can you do to master these emotions, to shift these emotions. And there are different podcast episodes and videos that I've done on emotional management. Just to briefly summarize, notice your triggers, notice what is bringing these emotions in your life, then accept the emotion and try and catch it as soon as it begins accept, breathe and let it go. We cling on to these emotions that don't support us, some of them don't support us in our life. So just let it go. And you can also just radically use different ways to shift your emotions. There are different tools you can use to sort of interrupt those patterns, whether it's listening to music or going up and going for a walk or talking to someone that always gives you a boost or focusing on something else. All of these things can shift you out of certain emotional patterns. Okay, moving on to the third topic, mental energy. I like to think of this as learning and how you develop and grow because these things really give you a lot of energy. This is why I refer to it as mental energy. If you're learning new things, if you're embracing a growth, then you're going to feel more energized because our brain likes that. It likes to have things to learn and do and stimulate. And so make sure that you have a healthy mental energy, that you're actually using all of those thoughts and all that brain of yours to do something where you actually learn. And in the mental energy part, also look at what are your thoughts like, how are they impacting how you feel, and noticing the correlation between your thoughts and your emotions. So that was the third part on mental energy. The fourth part is environment. By environment, I mean your surroundings. If where you're working is stimulating and fun and gives you that huge sense of freedom and joy and fulfillment, then you're going to be energized and you can do different things to tweak that environment. You can put in place some books that inspire you or some quotes on the wall and different things so that you feel more energized as soon as you enter this space. Incidentally, you can also do this in your home or you can use Feng Shui or you can do anything you like to give you that dose of energy. And if you can't change your environment for whatever reason, just remember that you can change your internal environment, by which I mean your thoughts and your emotions. Again, there are many ways you could do this, but once you learn to master that, you're not dependent on your environment. It's just, it's a bonus. It'll help, right? It's always nicer when your environment is nicer, but don't just rely on it. Okay, so moving on, I think, to tip number five. Yes, first was physical, the second was emotional management, the third, mental energy, the fourth, environment, and the fifth is relationships. For sure, <laughs> relationships have a huge impact on our, how we feel, on our energy. 
Start to look. Who drains you? Who gives you energy? It might sound crude said this way, but there are certain people who drain your energy and there are people who really boost you. I'm not saying cut out the people who drain you, but maybe be aware beforehand or try and reduce the time with them or prep yourself psychologically or choose a good moment to talk to them or afterwards do something to reshift your energy. Just be aware of how much these relationships impact your levels of energy and start to look for those nurturing relationships the ones that make you feel happy and fulfilled and joyful because for me especially as an extrovert but this is valid for introverts there's nothing that gives me greater energy than spending quality time with people I love this is probably my number one source of energy so for sure it matters a lot next part is zone of genius now why zone of genius when it comes to energy? Because when it comes to your work and your business or your career, if you're working in your zone of genius, you will be so much more fulfilled. You will get so much more done also, and you will be so much more of a high performer in your field, but you'll also be more energized. What is your zone of genius? This is where your skills and your challenge are both really, really met. It's the area in which you flow, you enjoy what you do, and it's really sort of a match made in heaven. There's a whole other uh, YouTube video on this where I'm with Danielle on flying in your zone of genius. You can check it out. There's a lot to it, but this is a fundamental aspect in terms of being energized in your work, which is essentially doing something you're really great at and you really enjoy and it's sort of your USP in some ways. It's, it's really where you thrive particularly. It's your thing. <laughs> and you might not know it or find it. Again, I invite you to check out that video with Danielle. Uh, there's a lot on the zone of genius. And the last point when it comes to energy is meaning and purpose. And these words, they have this big, you know, holistic view and meaning but essentially meaning and purpose just means finding a reason why you do what you do and the meaning can be as basic as I like it that can be a meaning a purpose can be it supports the company to grow or it supports other people to do well at this or it supports different communities to connect together whatever it is but being clear on why you do what you do and defining a reason and you can find meaning and purpose in everything I guarantee you can find meaning in your daily commute you can find meaning in any activity you engage in can be meaningful and purposeful for you as long as in your mind there is a purpose and a meaning so it's essentially just labeling it in your mind ha huh, this is why this is important I bet you don't often question yourself when you're eating out with a friend, what is the meaning of eating with this friend? No, because you're enjoying it. And so the meaning in your mind is building relationship with this friend and having a good time. So you've labeled a meaning for it. And that's really all it comes down to. But it's very important when it comes to energy, because yeah, we're driven by having a purpose, a meaning, and we don't like doing things that don't have a point. So briefly summarizing how you can have more energy in your life, physical energy with Ness, managing your emotions, mental energy, be stimulated, tune into your environment and tweak your environment to suit you, build and nurture relationships that actually give you energy, work and thrive in your zone of genius and define meaning, create meaning for what you do. And if you'd like to listen to all of these, but a lot more in depth, covered a lot more, I discuss them on my podcast, The Focus Bee Show, on the season four tea and pie, how you can craft and create more time, energy, and attention so that you have greater profit, impact, and expertise, tea and pie. And you can find it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all the podcast channels. This is where I cover all of these in depth, but this video is a brief summary of those key principles around energy. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you implement it in your life and that it makes a huge difference. Thank you for tuning in.